Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is a tritium vial. And this, over top of it, is a tritium, tritium gun sight. Put the two together and you get tritium face. I am tritium face. I am hydrogen three. Ha 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 ha. Let's cut the light on and see what we're talking about before we get too crazy, right? Alright, so here are the lights on now, and as you can see, I have a tritium vial right here. This one I've shown you guys before. It's not that amazing. It's just a vial of uh, tritium, and there's a phosphorus in there. The phosphorus reacts with the beta particles emitted from the tritium. That's where the light comes from. Otherwise, you, you wouldn't be able to see the tritium unless you had, like, just, you know, a giant bucket full of it. Well, anyway, this is the gun sight right here. I don't know if this is a good gun sight or a bad gun sight. I'm not pro-gun. I'm not anti-gun. I'm indifferent guns, so I don't want anybody to, compl to whine about guns. And my cat's over there playing in the packing material from my uh, computer I just got. But anyway, this is the uh, uh, gun site right here. My, a friend of mine brought it into work, and I said, I've got to put that in a video. And he said, okay, because he's ordering another one. Something's wrong with this one. I think it's defective or something. Although he said the brand's perfectly good. I, I Like I said, I don't know. So this could be like the best brand or the worst brand. Don't know. Or in, in a different brand, perhaps. Well, my question is this. When you have a gun sight that's tritium, which means that it glows 24-7, um, losing only about half of its brightness every 12.32 years, because that's a half-life of um, tritium, is this going to be, like, super radioactive? You know, is your hand going to melt off as you hold the gun? And the answer, of course, is no. It's not super radioactive. I can tell you that without even testing it. And no, it's not going to cause any harmful effects whatsoever. Even if it were to get into your body, it's not a particularly large amount of tritium, although the golden rule is keep radiation, or radioactive items, rather, out of the body, if at all possible. Outside, they're very little, of very little harm, usually. All right, let's test it, though. And to do that, I've got a couple of probes and things with me. Let's start off with this... Uh, uh, probe right here. If you see a fruit fly go by, I'm having quite the day here. I've got packing material everywhere from this computer. Then I had some bananas that rotted over there on the kitchen table, and I have fruit flies everywhere. I don't know what's going on. This is like, I mean, I expect to see like a circus animal go run by in just a few seconds. My cat's like attacking stuff. Wait, hold on. Where's the cat? Cat. Mew. Mew. Say hi to the camera, Mew. Mew. He will um speak back, but he's not speaking now. All right, anyway, so as you can see, it's crazy stuff, right? Um, so this is a scintillation counter with a sodium iodide probe on it, one-inch uh, sodium iodide probe. We cut the sound on, and as you can see, it's on times 10 mode. We're at about 1,200 counts per minute. We put this up against it. Not much. The x-rays coming off of this are just too low in energy to be detected. Likewise, when you put them up against here, nothing happens as well, too. This probe is really designed more for gamma. And here's the problem, and I'll show you a probe that can see it in just a minute. But when tritium decays, tritium has two neutrons and one proton. That single proton is what makes it a hydrogen atom. If it had two protons, it would be a helium atom, and so on and so on. Each time you add another proton, you go up the, up the periodic table of elements, right? Well, it has two neutrons and one proton, and one of those neutrons decays into a proton. The excess energy, because neutrons are bigger than protons, gets shot off as a beta particle, which is basically an electron that goes flying off. And then that's how this thing ends up with two protons and one neutron. It becomes helium. So this is slowly turning to helium over, helium over the course of a long, 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 long time, um, decaying by half every 12.32 years. And that beta particle that flies off is basically, like I said, an, elect an electron. And you have the beta flying off, and you have a neutrino, an anti-neutrino, actually, that flies off. This little itty-bitty hard-to-detect neutrino. And the 18.6 the, the thousand electron volts of energy that, that, is, that is emitted when this decays is shared randomly between the two. So instead of having a nice big energy peak right at 18.5 kiloelectron volts, if you were measuring it, you know, with a beta spectrometer, uh, you get this kind of wide range that you always get with betas, and it's called like a beta continuum. It's the lowest energy you could detect, which is nearly zero, all the way up to the highest you detect, which is 18.5, and it's kind of a odd-shaped bulge in between there. So what happens when that beta hits the plastic, or in this case when it hits the metal, um, is that those betas, high-energy electrons, they slow down really fast, and that energy's got to go somewhere, right? Energy's not created or destroyed, it's just changed. So, like, you know, when your car slows down really fast, all that energy's converted to heat in your brakes and all that stuff, the energy's got to go somewhere, the momentum. So what happens is you get these little x-rays that shoot off. They're basically the extra energy being spent off because it's got to go someplace. And this is called, and I say this wrong every time, and if you are German, I apologize, but it, they call it Bromstrahlungen. Yes, I do all this nuclear physics stuff, and I can never say it right, so you know what, hell with it. Bromstrahlungen, because German words are, you know, ich finde, 
Deutsche, whatever the word is for words. Gross. How about that? Und sie riecht wie Käse. All right, so um, <clears throat> basically put, you get this continuum of x-rays. It's hard to detect. So let's put it up against, let me just stop talking now and put it up against a um, x-ray um, Geiger counter and see what we, what we get. Now this inspector USB is showing us in counts per second at 0 0.66 counts per second, right, the second. We take this up here and we put it against the um, detector, the little mesh detector right up against it. Now it was already at 0 0.7. But we put this up against it and you're going to see it's not going to rise much, if at all. Let me see if I can light this up. And it's going up, then it'll go down, it'll go up. I've actually sat here and watched this thing. If you do a long time to count, there's a tiny little increase, a tiny increase. But you need to, you need to do like 10, 20 minute counts with this thing. Like a 20 minute count before and a 20 minute count after with the, the tritium attached. And then you take the difference and it's, it's not much. Barely detectable. Whereas if you take the tritium marker and put it up against, let me cut the light back on, it's not much. But it's a little bit. I mean, it's more. You see what I mean? It's going up. And it, this will actually go up a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. And something like the poor CRM100 here, as much as I like my little CRM100, my very first Geiger counter, I'll always have a special place in my heart for it, um, it can barely detect it at all. On a long time to count, this can be detected with this. So, let's use a probe we can detect this with. So we'll cut the power off. Pull this off. This is why I love my Ludlum. I can pull stuff off of it. There goes a fruit fly. Thank you for being in the video, fruit flies. Anybody else hate fruit flies? I just hate fruit flies. This right here is a um, low energy, it's called low energy gamma probe, but it's actually really an x-ray probe. See, low energy gamma, but it's actually x-rays. This is a RAP47 from SE International. It has a thin cesium iodide uh, uh, crystal. And we're gonna connect it with an adapter that I have here. And this is gonna let us hook it up to the Ludlum. This thing's energy range is perfectly suited to match up with this and my other detector. So let's turn it to times one. So what you see in the face is exactly what you get. Cut the sound on, cut it to speedy, the little rabbit, let it kind of get up, and then we'll cut it to the turtle, slow it down. So let's let it get it, give a second to average. This thing is detecting x-rays, and I'm going to put this up against the metal and clamp my hand on it so it stays kind of firm. So let's give it a second, and then we're going to put these two sources up against it. Now, what are we getting as a background? About 300 counts per minute, right? 250, 300, somewhere in there. 250, 300. We put this the the keychain thing up against it. It goes over. So let's set it to the times 10 mode. So everything's times 10. Hit the reset button, and then put this keychain thing up and see what we get. We're just proving right now that we can in fact detect tritium with this detector. Thousand counts per minute. 1200. 13. 14. There's my cat. 16. 18, come on, 2,000 counts per minute. Everything is times 10 now. 2,100? Any more? Okay, so 2,100 counts per minute, right? That's 1,900 counts per minute coming off of this. 1,900 counts per minute from this little thing. So as you can see, this is putting off x-rays all over the place. So let's go back to times uh, times one, reset. Let the system get back up and nice to normal here. And let's see what we get off of this. So we know we can read tritium, how much is in this. Now the metal's probably blocking a lot of this. So let's look right into the face, right into the eyes of the, of the tritium beast. And this is a very thin aluminum piece right here. So you see where we are. We're at about 250 to 300 counts per minute. We put this right up against the metal. And maybe a little. It's kind of moving a little bit more towards 300 than 200, but not by much. My cat is so thinking about trying to jump up here. No, 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 no. Bad kitty. Stay back. Nuclear physics. You can't do nuclear physics. See, it's a little higher, a little closer to the 300. You move this away, and it should drop down to a little closer to the 200. So the x-ray detector detects it, but let's all just agree we're not seeing that much. This is not like mind-blowing radiation. This little thing isn't melting my skin off. 
So, I don't know, maybe it's a good gun sight, maybe it's not, but it's not particularly radioactive. So we're going to do one last thing before we go, and we're going to look at a gamma spectrum of this. All right? Okay, so we take a spectrum quickly using the big key uh, chain. As you can see, it's a nice, beautiful spectrum. It's quite wide because of the beta continuum. So let's drop the gun sight in, and I'm going to time compress this really fast so you can see what happens. All right, so there it goes building. This is like a 30-minute thing, but I'm compressing it into like, what, 10 seconds or something. As you can see, the blue part is the tritium, and it's, it's growing, but my God, it's barely growing. That stuff you see shooting up really fast is actually electrical background noise being picked up. <laughs> That's the finished result, the finished spectrum. Uh, as you can look and see, it has a 13.359 kiloelectron volt. Uh, Brunstrelung radiation continuum centroid. So basically that, that, that's the center point, point of that big wide blob. And the reason it's so wide, it's 2.712 keV to 20.174 keV, is because it's x-rays coming off of a large wide continuum from the beta decay. Uh, you can even see a little bit of x-ray um, XRF shielding uh, uh, radiation. That's basically the tritium bouncing off the in the background cosmic rays bouncing off my 70 uh, in, off my lead to create 75 to 85 keV photons. But the point of the matter is you can detect it. But it took 30 minutes to make that little piffling itty bitty spectrum. So the verdict is uh, as is out there. I'm pretty sure this lens isn't going to hurt you. And I'll put it post in the links where you can actually uh, see the spectrums up close and personal. Just All right, to leave bye bye. It was something funny at the end. I took my detector and taped it on because I can't hold it with my hands at the same time I'm doing this. Um, this is in the times uh, 10 position, so we're looking at uh, nearly 1,000 counts per minute. And there's a smoke alarm right there. Let's put this up against it and see what we get. And it goes off the chart. Now, there's your good x ray source. <laughs>